damn near everyone on the planet knows that Batman is really Bruce Wayne. And in the DC Universe, quite a lot of people know that as well. In fact, so many people know his true identity that I couldn't even begin to list them all in this video. So you may wonder why I'm even making this video. Well, although many people know who Batman really is, most of them were shown who he was or told that he was Batman. As in, they didn't actually work it out on their own using detective work and logic. Batman either unmasked them or someone else told them. Such as Rachel Ghoul telling his daughter Talia who Batman really was. So the focus of this video isn't about people who know Bruce Wayne as a superhero, it's about the people who were able to deduce his identity on their own, and more importantly, how they did it. Hugo Strange Now in canon, Hugo Strange was actually the first person to deduce Batman's identity. And how did he do it? Simple. Strange is a genius psychiatrist, and using those skills he formed a psychological profile who the type of person Batman would be and then he investigated further to see those who most likely match this. And in Gotham, the best candidate was Bruce Wayne. Though Bruce Wayne was later able to trick Hugo Strange into thinking he was not Batman, even though Hugo Strange had actually seen him without his mask. And in the show Batman the Animated Series, he figured out Bruce Wayne was Batman and had proof because he was using a machine which could see into Bruce Wayne's thoughts. But Dick Grayson used makeup and props to pretend to be Bruce Wayne in front of Batman and convinced Hugo Strange that Batman was a different person entirely. Strange also figured it out using a psychological profile in Batman Arkham City. Though in this version, Batman wasn't able to trick him into thinking he wasn't Bruce Wayne. But it didn't really matter as Strange took the secret to its grave. Tim Drake Tim Drake is not only one of the people to work out Batman's identity, but he's also most likely the youngest person to ever work it out. How did he do it? Simple. He saw Haley Circus performing one night back when he was quite little, and back when Dick Grayson was still a performer with his family. And then, years later, he saw Nightwing pull off an acrobatic move that was exactly the same as the one he'd seen Dick Grayson do back in Haley's Circus. And this was a very difficult move that only a few people on the planet can do, so he figured that Nightwing must be Dick Grayson. And so he tracked Dick Grayson and saw that he was adopted by Bruce Wayne. And shortly after the adoption, Batman suddenly had Robin as a sidekick. And so he put two and two together and worked out who Batman really was. Lex Luthor Lex Luthor worked out Batman's identity in a similar way to Tim Drake. During the Forever Evil comic event, it was revealed that Nightwing was Dick Grayson. And later in the same comic series, Batman is shown being extremely worried about Dick Grayson and desperately trying to save his life because he's going to die. And Batman becomes uncharacteristically emotional and he completely loses it when he thought Dick Grayson was actually dead for real. And Lex Luthor took note of this and reasoned that the two of them must be very close. And so he tracked Dick Grayson's life and again he saw that he was adopted by Bruce Wayne and that Robin then came on the scene. And from that, Lex Luthor was able to see that Bruce Wayne must be Batman. And the same is true of Deathstroke, who figured out that Nightwing was Dick Grayson and followed it to mean that Batman must be Bruce Wayne. Though in the main continuity, he doesn't really care, and this has been retconned around him in different versions. Basically what I'm saying is, in some versions he knows, in some versions he doesn't. To be fair, in most he doesn't, but he did manage to work it out way back when in the main DC universe. Ra's al Ghul Ra's method was very simple. He followed the money. He reasoned that in order to be Batman, a person would need to be rich to be able to afford his gadgets and tech. And so he looked for people rich enough, and then he looked for people who had actually gathered the tech that Batman would need. It was a simple matter for my people to learn which wealthy Americans were amassing what Batman might require. And it's actually because of this that Bruce Wayne changed how he acquired tech and took much greater care to cover his tracks, as he didn't want anyone else to figure out his secret. Amanda Waller also managed to work out his identity in several continuities, and she most likely did it in much the same way as Rachel Ghoul, using her vast government resources to investigate those in Gotham who could be Batman, and then narrowing it down, till Bruce Wayne was the only candidate left. Bane Bane working out Batman's identity is either terrible writing, or incredible genius on Bane's part. Basically, Bane had been studying Batman for long enough that when he saw Bruce Wayne, he recognised that he moved like Batman, and he instantly knew who he really was, because he knew his characteristics and movements that well. Now, to be honest, that is a bit thin, and it's not the most impressive one on this list, as it's a very slim reason for him figuring it out. Though this was actually adapted in the Batman Arkham Origins video game, 
where Bruce Wayne and Batman say a line in exactly the same way. You just ran out of time. You just ran out of time. And from this, Bane is able to work out who he is. Alfred, Bane knows who I am. You're not safe at Wayne Manor. Now, like I say, this is a bit flimsy, really, and it's just a quick way of explaining how Bane works it out, as it created for a better dynamic between the two of them, and for a more engaging story, as Bane could attack both Batman and Bruce Wayne. The Riddler. Now, the Riddler was dying of a terminal illness, and there was no way he was going to survive. And so, he manipulated events so that he could use one of Ra's al Ghul's Lazarus pits to cure the condition. And it did heal him, and while he was in the pit, he was able to deduce that Batman was actually Bruce Wayne. And he later teamed up with Hush, who of course was Dr. Elliot Thomas, a person who absolutely despises Bruce Wayne. And the two teamed up to take Batman down together. Although following the Infinite Crisis comic event, the Riddler went into a coma for a year, and he lost all memory that Batman was actually Bruce Wayne. Which is really lazy writing, if I'm honest. I mean, it's just a quick excuse, and it's not the worst way of someone forgetting. In fact, in that Arkham Origins video game I mentioned, Bane overdoses on the chemical of Venom, and it literally destroys the memory. He's secure, and it appears the TN1 Bane took damaged his memory permanently. Uh, does that mean he won't be revealing your identity? Looks that way. And that doesn't really make any sense either, because why would it destroy that specific memory and not all the rest of his memories? But anyway, I do have to say though, the best part about the Riddler actually working out that he was Bruce Wayne was that the Riddler would never tell anyone. Because as Batman says, the Riddler is obsessed with riddles. And a riddle that everyone knows the answer to is worthless. And so Batman knows he'll never reveal it to the world. That and the fact that if he did actually reveal it to the world, then Batman could tell Ra's al Ghul that the Riddler used one of his Lazarus pits. And Ra's al Ghul doesn't let anyone use his Lazarus pits, and he would send the League of Assassins after him. So it's in the Riddler's best interest to keep it to himself. It's also been made clear that the Joker actually knows who Batman is. In fact, Bruce Wayne has actually visited Arkham Asylum and told the Joker that he is Batman. But the Joker not only doesn't care who Batman really is, he doesn't want to know who he is. And so his psychosis blocks the memory from his mind. Because if he knew who Batman really was, it would spoil the fun that he has fighting him. And those are the people who have figured out Batman's real identity. There are others, of course, here and there across all of the different continuities. He needs you. He needs the Batman. But the ones I've mentioned in this video are the main ones. Though, if there are any others that you think should have been mentioned, then please let us know in the comments. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.